Hi, Nate here to talk about the item world. So I've been putting off doing a video about the item world because there's a lot to talk about. Each game has compounded more and more features onto it and now it's like super complicated. So bear with me as there's a lot to cover, but hopefully I can help you understand some of it. Okay, so before we look at the item world we need to understand items in general. Some of this is covered in my max stats videos, but I'll recap it here. In Disguise 5, every item is ranked from rank 1 to rank 40. There's no way of viewing this rank in the game, but luckily some very helpful people on the internet have created charts that rank the weapons and equipment in the game for you. I'll link the chart in the description. In addition to these 40 ranks, every item is either normal or it's Land of Carnage. You can think of these Land of Carnage versions as sort of rank 41 to rank 80 items. For example, a rank 2 Land of Carnage item will be better than a rank 39 normal item of the same type. As you might imagine, the Land of Carnage items are only available from the Land of Carnage, or an item world found inside of a Land of Carnage item. Every item has a bunch of different stats to consider too. I'm going to explain them all here so there's no confusion later. First off we have the name, this is just to identify the item and you can freely change this at the item assembly for free if you want to customise your equipment. Next we have the item's level, an item's level is an indication of its power, but much like a player's level it isn't definitive. You can have a level 1 item just as powerful as a level 100 if you know what you're doing. Levels are gained within the item world, but we'll get to that. Next is the item's rarity. There are four states of rarity, as seen by the emblem to the right of the item's rarity score. These are common, rare, legendary, and epic. These are gained depending on the rarity score. Anything under 25 is a common, 25 to 49 is a rare, 50 to 99 is a legendary, and 100 is an epic. Certain rarity states are needed to make bosses appear in the item world, as well as for the same bonus. A character equipped with multiple items of the same rarity state will give bonus stats to the item. Two items the same gives 10%, three gives 20%, and all four gives 30%. Rarity also increases the stats gained per level increase. Next we have population. Population is how many innocents can currently live inside this item. We'll get to innocence later, so don't worry for now. Next we have all the basic stats. HP, attack, defense, etc. This has different effects depending on the item type. Equipment will add these stats to the character it is equipped to. Healing items will restore the amount of HP and SP seen here to the unit it is used on. Correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but the hit stat on stealing items is the bonus hit granted for stealing using that particular item. This should work the same for attack items too with the attack power stat indicated in the description being given as a bonus to the listed amount. Shards and extracts will grant this amount of stats permanently to whoever it is used on. Next we have some other attributes. Bonus movement when equipped, bonus jump when equipped, the range of the weapon, bonus counter moves, and bonus critical hit chance. Finally we have a list of innocents and their value, but like I said we'll cover those later. Okay, so now you know what an item is, what is the item world? Well, according to Disgaea lore, in every item, no matter how trivial, there is its own world. Most of the inhabitants of this world are hostile and weaken the true strength of the item. So by defeating these hostile units, you can power up an item and increase its level. There are also helpful creatures within the item called Innocents. These are neutral in a fight and only defend themselves against any attackers. These increase stats and give helpful bonuses to the item they live in, depending on their job. You can also defeat these to make them become subdued, allowing you to move them from item to item. But innocent management is another video altogether. When going to the item world you will be shown the floor, the resident level and the root information. And this is where Disgaea 5 begins to differ to some of the older games. There's no limit to the number of floors in the item world here, though there is a level limit of 9999. 
However, simply moving through floors without completing them does not increase the item's level, like in the older games. Levels are gained through completion bonuses, and some other means that we'll get into. The level of the residents of the item world are also not increased by floor depth, but by the level of the item itself. The route information displays which route you've chosen to take through the item world. This will start as a normal route, but you can change that when you first visit an innocent town. The first route is the normal one. This has the basic chances to find all the different events in the item world, and item leveling is standard too. Next is the item enhance route. This one makes it more likely you'll find level spheres and level fish. Level spheres give the item an extra level when it's broken, and level fish give an extra level when they're being lifted when you finish a floor. This can either be finished by clearing the stage or just getting to the gate. You'll also get a bonus level for every 5 floors you traverse using this route. The Innocent Enhance route increases the rate in which you'll find innocents, and also makes them stronger when they're subdued. The Treasure Chest route increases the spawn chance of treasure chests, but it's probably not a very useful route compared to the others. The Mystery Room route increases the chance of mystery rooms of all kinds, and this is a useful one for when you're duplicating items or increasing rarity. Invader routes increase the spawn chance of invading Neverworlds and stray lost armies. I guess this is good if you're collecting the Neverworld parts, but otherwise, not a great route. And finally, the bonus route increases the chance of bottle mails and boards. As good as these can be for getting new skill scrolls, there's other routes with better rewards in my opinion. So at first when using the item world, your goal is probably going to be to power up your equipment. I'd still recommend the mystery room route though, as there's a lot of helpful bonuses that can be found here. So the item world is usually separated into chunks of 10 floors at a time. Every 10th floor you will come across an item boss. This can be an item in general, king, god or god too. Defeating a boss will improve the item's training bonus, which boosts its rarity. This is useful for gaining the same bonus as well as finding rank 40 items. Once you complete a boss floor, you will always be taken to an innocent town. This is a room you can freely move around in which includes a hospital, a shop and a rabbit who will let you change the item room. You can also escape the item world for free from here, keeping all your progress so far. To escape with your progress intact from elsewhere, you're going to need an item called Mr. Gensi's Exit. Luckily you'll always get one of these for completing a boss stage, and you can also create them using the alchemist. Once you exit, you are shown the results, and this shows the stat increase and any other bonuses. As mentioned before, training bonus increases rarity. You can also have a population increase, an item assembly increase, and a kill bonus. Population increase is exactly what it sounds like, it's more room for innocence to be stored on the item. Item assembly increases will let you have one extra go on the item assembly, uh, but more on that later. And finally, the kill bonus is a hidden stat that you can only see when you finish an item world run. The higher this is, the more stats you gain from levels in the item world. Therefore, a maxed out item needs to have this at maximum as quickly as possible. It's increased depending on the amount and strength of the defeated enemies. Therefore, a 20 star, power increased, land of carnage level 9999 enemy will boost this pretty quick, but it will also be really difficult to kill. So that's the basics of the item world. I wanted to give a good foundation before moving on to the more complicated stuff. So, subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of the guide. And that's coming soon. Thanks for watching.